Walker, Jane Schuler, Myra Schulkes, Kay Silver, Faustina Sindal, Carol Slonen, Nina Spinner Sands, Abigail Stern, Leslie Umschweiss, Kathy Woodrum, Ava Zakin, Christina Znogmensky, and in beloved memory, Jerry Zachmeyer. We have to give a very special shout out to the staff of the Sterling Road Library, who despite the pandemic is there handing out books, working every day. We could not do it without you. Thank you volunteers. You are the best. I'm so proud to be one of you. And now I'd like to turn it over to our branch manager, Bill Fritz. Bill, you need to unmute. Here we go. Good evening. Yes, we are certainly experiencing some very unusual times right now. And in the library, this is certainly an unexpected and um, challenging situation that we've all been dealing with. But while we've been closed, we have been taking advantage of that time. And there's just so many things that always need to be done. You always have a very long laundry list of things that you wanna get accomplished but it seems that you never have the time. Now, as bad as this uh, coronavirus is and, and uh, how disruptive it is, we have done our best to take advantage of the time that we've had and we have not wasted it at all. So I'm gonna go through a few points on this, some of the changes that have been made so that whenever we can welcome our customers back to the library, they're gonna see that we've really been busy trying to make life better for them whenever they come to the library. One of the first things that we did was we weeded the collection. We removed all the outdated and worn materials. <clears throat> and now we have everything very nicely organized. Another thing that we did along with that was we adjusted the shelving so that now you don't have to stoop way down to reach for a book because those bottom shelves are up higher now. And instead of there being four rows of books, there's gonna be three. So it just makes everything much more easy to reach. And I thought that was an important thing for us to do. Since we had the time, another thing that we did was we took all of the books we had that, that we did keep that had bad end labels on them and re we replaced them with new ones. So now it's gonna be a lot easier to read the uh, call letters on the books and make them a lot easier to find. Now we moved on to um, moving the holes. The holes were to the right once you walked into the library. Those have been moved over to where the hot titles are. Now by making this move, it gave me room to move all of the young adult books out of the teen room. And now I have an empty teen room. What I've done with the teen room is we've taken all the shelving out. We've uh, ordered some new computers and we have ordered a couch to be put in the teen room so that we can provide a space for teens that will be theirs. And I think that's something that's been missing for a long time in our library. We really need to make a space for them if we want them to come. And I think that they will once they see that we're making an effort to give them a place where they can make a little noise, uh, can uh, work together, study together, and that we're there to assist them. Uh, a few other things that I did was I moved the uh, print station right underneath the, the TV when you walk in the library, which advertises all of our programming. And by being able to move that, it makes it easier for us to show customers where their print jobs are. Plus by removing it, or what, the area from where I moved it, that wall space now will be able to house two computers that will be added to the team collection of computers. Um, Right now with our curbside service, I don't know if everyone's aware of it, but the, what we're doing is we're actually bringing the books to your car. All you have to do is place the hold online or call the library and we will make arrangements to either, if we have it, bring it to you or we will get it for you. Once we get your items, we call you, we arrange a time that you're gonna to come to pick them up and we bring it out to your car. Um, so far, we're getting into our, I guess, second or third month of doing this. We're over a thousand customers a month right now. So it's keeping us very busy. 
but we're glad because it's it we're so appreciative for all the customers that are using us now in, in this time and by the same token we're getting such positive feedback it's really reassuring for us we know that there's a lot of people out there that really appreciate what we're doing and we're doing as much as we can to help everybody get through the situation a little easier um one thing I have to say is from talking with the staff and myself included, we miss our customers because you just, we, working for our customers is what we're there for and not being able to have that face-to-face -face interaction with our customers, we, we sorely miss. So we are certainly very hopeful that this situation turns around to where we can open our doors and invite all of our customers back. So I do want to say that if anybody has any question about anything, by all means, please feel free to call the library and uh, ask for Bill. I'll be glad to answer any questions that you have. Thank you. Thank you, Bill, to you and your staff. We appreciate all your efforts. Thank you. And You're now welcome. that is going to conclude our annual meeting. And I'm going to turn it over again to Fern Cantor who is going to introduce our fabulous guest speaker, Chef Allen. Okay. Uh, I hope you can all see, he, he's there in real life with this wonderful picture of Alan Susser. We are so proud to have him tonight as our guest speaker. Uh, he's been touted by the New York Times as the Ponce de Leon of New Florida cooking. Uh, Alan is a James Beard award-winning chef with a passionate commitment to local fresh ingredients. His landmark restaurant, Chef Allen, changed the way people ate in this area and continue to make an impact. Uh, Food and Wine Magazine named Chef Allen as one of the best 10 chefs in America. Tonight, you will learn the origin, origins and the alchemy of chocolate. Chef Allen works with Emerald Estate in Jade Mountain on St. Lucia in the West Indies. How exotic. Their estate farm has been developed by three generations of care and local technique. He will discuss how cacao beans are farm fermented and sun-dried on the estate, much like a fine wine. His Emerald Estate vintage chocolate is a bean-to-bar bean bar authenticity, handcrafted organic chocolate. He will also share a few of his chocolate recipes from his latest cookbook, Green Fig and Lionfish, Sustainable Caribbean Cooking. A fan of our library, a friend, and a neighbor, he has been kind enough to provide us with an autographed copy to be auctioned. And when he was called, when I called him to see if he would do this tonight, there wasn't a moment's hesitation. Personally, on behalf of the Sterling Road friends, we're thrilled to have Chef Allen here with us tonight. Allen, it's all yours. Oh, uh, listen, everybody, when, uh, when, while he is on the air, please go to speaker view. We are muting all of you. If you have a question for him, he will answer them in between recipes. Just put it in chat. All right? Thank you so okay. much. Okay, so hopefully you can hear me. And welcome everybody. Uh, I'm Chef Alan Susser and a pleasure to be uh, cooking with you and sharing kind of uh, some of the, the fun that I have with uh, chocolate and cacao. Um, I have lived in Emerald, Emerald uh, Hills for quite a long time, uh, almost uh, 30 years here. So this is my neighborhood. I love to see the library built here and I, I love to, to use it and just kind of uh, really love to be able to support uh, the, the library and share with you some of the fun that I have uh, with my cooking and with some of the things. One of the things that I'm so lucky about is I've got a job that I love to do. I love the type of cuisine that I cook, the ingredients that I use. Right now I am a consultant. Um, I've gotten out of the kitchen a little bit, but not too far. It's really something that I've had a, a tremendous amount of fun with and being able to help restaurateurs, uh, hoteliers, resorts, to be creative, to be able to utilize their sustainable assets and kind of create a cuisine or a 
uh, whatever it is that they, they need uh, appropriately uh, with that. So the consulting has been awesome. I've been working with uh, Jade Mountain in St. Lucia actually for over 10 years. And it's really an awesome place. St. Lucia is very much of a tropical oasis. It's paradise, I'll tell you what. The resort has 650 acres and it's right on the Caribbean. Each of the, the rooms has infinity pools open to the Caribbean overlooking the Piton Mountains. And with that, we actually have a 30 acre organic farm. On the 30 acre organic farm, we do have over a thousand cacao trees. And that's kind of really why I wanted to introduce you to the cacao and how we make chocolate uh, because it's really something that I learned to do there. And I don't think a whole lot of people kind of understand that. Uh, it's part of thinking about sustainability. It's thinking about uh, ecotourism. It's thinking about how to keep some things that are native and local and kind of teaching the, the locals how to, to manage it and to utilize it. And kind of that's kind of how, how I came about into the, the chocolate world. Okay, uh, I do have a lot of the, these recipes in my new book, which is a uh, green fig and lionfish, and that uh, that uh, you can actually take a look at that online or at the library, actually, uh, greenfigandlionfish.com. I've uh, put up a number of recipes as well as some that I'm doing tonight. Uh, with that, let's dig into chocolate, and kind of chocolate is an amazing thing, uh, you know, and, and I find that. There's a couple different approaches to chocolate. To some people, they think chocolate is either milk chocolate or dark chocolate. And that's only a beginning. It doesn't even begin to talk about what chocolate is about. Milk chocolate and dark chocolate is actually says what's in the chocolate. What kind of cacao is in the chocolate is really a whole nother question. Did you know that cacao grows all over the tropical world? But it actually originated in Latin America and Mexico and South America. It's been going back uh, to the Aztecs and to time, time and time again, quite a while, and it's been awesome. So it grows, it's actually grown in St. Lucia for about 200 years. On our, with that, kind of what you need to understand, it grows on trees, so the cacao is almost like a little small fruit foot the size of a football. I don't have any here because uh, I, did, I haven't been out to St. Lucia for a couple of months right now, but otherwise I would. I do have the beans from there. So what happens here, let me explain to you a little bit about the, the, the farm. Kind of just as any other type of, uh, any other type of uh, growing, the cacao grows on, on trees and there's actually two seasons for the cacao, which is the, you know, the, the pod. And spring is the, the biggest season for harvesting when it becomes ripe. And also then into the winter is a minor season. So each tree has probably about 30 to 40 pods that grow out of it. The pods are usually pretty colorful. The colorful, colorful like yellow, purple, green, orange, really pretty magnificent. And when they ripen, they come to full color. So when they're ripened, when you ripen the, the, the fruit, then uh, during harvest time, what we do is we go around with a machete and cut the fruit out of the tree. And the tree, ha again, has about 30 or 40, but not all of them ripen at the same time. Kind of like the mangoes. We've got plenty of mangoes here, and you know I'm a lover of mangoes. But so the, the cacao, though the fruit is fairly large, and what happens is you crack it open and open it up the, the shell. Inside the shell of this fruit is about 30 or 40 seeds that are in there. Those seeds have a little bit of a fruity, uh, citrusy outside, almost, uh, almost like a, a grape uh, type of thing. And what happens is that is what gets fermented. So as a chocolatier, as someone who makes chocolate, one of the first things that we do is you, you pick the ripeness of the fruit. Then after that, you actually ferment it, okay? Fermenting, still today, all over the world, these are fermented. And as we do out in St. Lucia, 
we ferment it out in the jungle or out under the trees under banana leaves. Okay, we ferment them for about seven days. Seven days we're fermenting the, the beans. The beans uh, go and what happens in fermentation is the sugars turn, it releases uh, vinegars and uh, as well as fermenting and the temperatures rise and the temperature rises to about 113, 115 degrees. Every two days with a wooden shovel, we turn the ferment until it's done. And then what we do is put it out to dry in the sun for another seven days. So seven days of fermenting and seven days of sun drying. That finished sun drying is pretty much what most people look at as cocoa beans or cacao beans uh, with that. And it really does not taste like chocolate yet. I do have some of those here. Uh, I'm gonna try to bring that up to you closer there. So those are cacao beans, as you can see. And these cocoa beans are then the next process, okay? The next process in this chocolate making is, and let, let me back up because generally, one of the things that we, we do in St. Lucia and what I love about it is, is that we make our own chocolate bean to bar and from farm to, to bar as well. Okay, so that where most chocolates that are made are farms that make the beans, they grow the beans, dry it, and at that point, bag it and send it around the world. So chocolatiers in San Francisco, chocolatiers in Brooklyn, chocolatiers in Miami, they're getting from farms from the Caribbean or from uh, South America or from the Ivory Coast or Africa and all of these areas that, that grow the chocolate. The same thing for French chocolate, Belgian chocolate, uh, Italian chocolates. These are all made from the beans. So they all start with the beans, whereas here, what I'm able to do is I'm actually starting with the trees, the fermentation, and then the fruit, and then taking it from there. So our, our chocolate is really kind of like a winemaker, I call it, because it's kind of made on the premises from beginning to end, and it's not sent off in that sort of fashion. So let me dig into this a second. So what we do is you have these beans, okay? So the beans now have a shell on it, okay? So the shell, what we do first is roast the beans, okay? So the, a roaster is almost like a coffee roast, but we can also roast it in an oven. So I'm gonna roast these beans that I've got on the tray here in an oven. Okay, and basically what we do with oven roasting is time and temperature. Okay, so for roasting, you can roast it very quickly at a high temperature, impact the flavor like that, or even at a low temperature, slow roast. So it's really a different stylistic chocolate when you're done with it, when you're done with the, 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 the cacao bean. So that, again, the decision after the fermentation, the time and the flavors that you put in fermentation is then the roasting process and how intense the chocolate flavor you want or mild the chocolate flavor, it all affects in that sort of fashion. So once we've got that roasting and we take that roasting, then what you do is take it and you have to crack the outside shell, okay? This outside shell, I'm gonna show you here. Let me just, you can crack it. Okay, you crack it open, and we actually use something called a winnower. So we crack it and then winnow. What the idea of winnowing is, is that it takes and separates the shell from the chocolate nib. Okay, that chocolate nib is that 100% cacao, 100% chocolate. No sugar, no sweetness, nothing in it except the wonderful aromatic flavors that we've got from the roasting in the oven and from the fermentation. So that's kind of what we've got going on there. Now, I'm gonna take this next step and kind of bring this in, because this is a bowl of nibs. And usually, the nibs have to get ground, okay? So to grind the nibs, old-fashioned style, I've got a grinder, stone mortar and pestle. Out in St. Lucia, we use a 10-pound mortar and pestle, actually it's a 10 pound bricks, 
circular, circular bricks that run circular and round. And what you do is crush the chocolate and crush the chocolate, okay? And so that what happens is it crushes and cracks the nibs. And so from these large nibs, you see, you can almost see it when you're close, if you were here, you'd see there's small nibs. And I, you probably haven't seen it, but now the aromatics are coming out. The flavors are coming out of this chocolate nib and it's grinding. And so that when you're grinding, it takes actually about, guess what? Almost four days, anywhere between 48 and 72 hours, depending on how, how you're grinding it, what type of grind that you're doing to grind down chocolate to what happens is it becomes a chocolate liqueur. It becomes from this friction, just from the friction of the stone against stone, grinding, 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 down to 20 microns or 18 microns. This becomes a liquid from that because at about 93, 94 degrees, chocolate melts. Okay, and so that the chocolate then becomes a liquid and then grinds, grinds, grinds through until you get to it. So I'm not gonna grind this down for another four days, but I just want to bring that to, you know, to your awareness. So the next step here, we pour it out and guess what? You get a block of chocolate, okay? That's kind of, we, we set that up, we get a block of chocolate and that's kind of how the, the chocolate becomes chocolate. With this chocolate, what I want to also first describe before we get into the, in the recipes is this could be 100% cacao. Uh, the way I, I make chocolate, I make chocolate, I do a couple of different variety, a couple of different things with the chocolate. We make a 92% cacao, which means it has 8% sugar and 92% cacao. So that's kind of very bitter, bitter, bitter sweet, uh, just a touch of sweetness to it. But when, the chocolate that I make only has cacao and sugar, okay? It's not candy, believe me, this is not candy. This is beautiful, fine chocolate. If we put in, you've probably seen different chocolates that say 60%, 70%, 72%. That's the percentage of cacao compared to sugar. Okay, so it sweetens it. What happens is it sweetens it, it becomes a little bit more richer tasting, but the cacao just is the same. We don't add any cocoa butter, we don't add any lexidin, we don't add anything to thicken or, or enrich it. That's kind of what we do for our chocolate. Uh, so pure chocolate, cane sugar, all organic. The farm is organic, the sugar that we use is organic. So this Emerald Estate chocolate is wonderful. And guess what? I can smell my cocoa beans. <laughs> I wish this was smell-o-vision. It's not yet, but right now the aromatics of the, the dark roasting is starting. I have the oven at 400 degrees, so that's probably about, I, I would leave it there for about eight to 10 minutes at that temperature, and it roasts evenly. We let it cool down, so I'm gonna put this aside back over here. I'm gonna step out for just a second. So I can step back in here with you. Uh, so that's awesome. The, the cacao really is just aromatic and flavorful. The, the chocolate, there's so many different types of chocolate. And going back to the, the chocolate, each country, each farm, you know, just like wine, the variety of the, the, the cacao bean, the type of farming that's done, the care that's uh, being given to it, the microclimate, this all affects the flavor of the chocolate. There's actually a couple different varieties of cacao. Uh, some of the major varieties that we deal with that we have on the farm is a criollo bean, which is kind of like the most superior. We have a foresterio, which is kind of a full body. And then we also have a trinidadia. Those are the three varieties of cacao bean that we have on the farm. And we put a blend of those in. So when we harvest our trees, we don't separate the varieties, we're actually blending them together. 
once in a while I do a couple of single varieties uh, for that, which is pretty awesome. Actually, the Criollo, the chocolate almost turns royal purple uh, because of just the, the flavor and the coloration uh, with that. So this is a blend of those chocolates, of those cocoa beans. And so that's kind of what we're going to do from here. So with this chocolate, I'm going to do a couple of different recipes for you. Okay, kind of just straight off with chocolate. And then I'm going to then add some in, in things into it and then going to bake with it. So we have three levels of chocolate dessert and chocolate things that I'm going to put together here for you uh, so that you kind of get an idea. So this chocolate, just so you can see it, uh, what you do is on a big board, big heavy knife, when you're cutting chocolate block, start at one end and cut just the edge off, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is take it and chop that. I'm gonna turn the edge again and cut that through. Okay, this is looking good. And just continue to cut because chocolate, there's a couple ways of melting chocolate. And that's kind of what we're going to get into next as we start to make some of the things with the chocolate. Because chocolatier and making chocolate is one world. Okay, that's kind of where, what happens. And most pastry chefs actually don't quite know how to make chocolate. They melt chocolate and work with chocolate like this once it's made. The art of making the chocolate is really something else and beautiful thing that, uh, that I do. And uh, one of the things that I learned out in St. Lucia uh, at Emerald Estate. So I'm gonna put this block aside for a moment. And with baking, I like to kind of measure, okay? I always think it's good to measure. The difference between baking and cooking is measuring, okay? Cooking is all about a little of this, a little of that kind of adding the, the, the flavors that you want and tasting as you go. When you're doing baking and chocolate making, you kind of got to follow the recipe. You've got to follow through with what it is in that sort of fashion. So with this chocolate, what I'm going to do is actually, now what I'm gonna do is start with a chocolate truffle. Okay, that's the first recipe we're going to do. Each of these recipes are gonna be a couple of steps so I'll, I'll let you know when I'm doing one and then into the other. So for the chocolate truffle, to melt the chocolate, I'm gonna put on, I'm gonna just step over here to put my stove on. And I'm with you still. There I am, I'm just uh, like putting on my stove. There we go, I'm right over here. Okay, so my stove is here, I'm gonna just move my book out of the way too, so you don't get uh, involved with that. And so for this truffle, what I'm gonna start off is with some heavy cream, I'm sorry, heavy cream I'm pouring onto the stove top, okay, into a, in, uh, into a pan, sorry about that. Uh, so the pan the, is, I'm going to bring the heavy cream to a simmer, okay? With the chocolate that I just cut, I'm going to combine that with a little piece of butter, okay, into a bowl. And it is organized. And so it's interesting, with the chocolate, as I said, there's a couple ways of melting it and being able to, to utilize it. One is by adding fat or heavy cream into it. You actually cannot add water into, you can't let water touch chocolate. You can put something like heavy cream into it, you can put alcohol into it, but not water. Water will seize up chocolate and become lumpy and solid so that you'll see through tonight, I'm gonna to do a couple of different things, but I'm never gonna add water directly into the chocolate. I will be using a couple of different things. I will be using water as a double boiler, and also I'm gonna show you, I will kind of microwave also, uh, which will be something else. So for this, again, this is just room temperature, okay? 
the heavy cream has come to a boil and I'm going to pull, pour the heavy cream over the chocolate. And this we just let sit for a few minutes, okay? I'm just gonna let that, that heat melt through the chocolate and also adding the fat, which is in the heavy cream and the butter, that's kind of where the richness is when you get to truffles. Truffles are awesome. Truffles are little balls of all sorts of, uh, they, you can add different flavors to the truffle if you like. Uh, you can add rum to it, you can add cognac to it, you can add spices to it, vanilla, ginger, almost anything you know, that you want in that sort of fashion. Uh, so we're just letting this sort of heat up all the way through without doing much to it, just sitting there in that sort of fashion. So this is starting to, to melt down. As this starts to melt, now I'm gonna just take my spoon and kind of mix in the, the heavy cream as it starts to cool down and starts to come together. This will start to come together. Okay, it starts to thicken. There's also, some people call this a ganache. Uh, without the butter, the, the, with the truffle, it adds, uh, it adds that sort of richness to it by having the butter in it. But this is how you would make a ganache, by pouring the heavy cream over the chocolate. Okay, so now here you can see that rich chocolate. Okay, let's get you right in there. So you can see the chocolate. And that's a chocolate truffle ganache, as it's called. Okay, so just, this needs to set up. What does it mean to say set up? It means right now, as you can see, it's thin. It's beautiful viscosity to it. Smells delicious, I'll tell you what, really smells delicious. And you can smell some of the beautiful Aromas, the aromas have, have uh, the, the sort of uh, uh, toastiness of the, the chocolate and such. And now what I'm going to do is need to put this into the refrigerator and let this set. Okay, so once this goes into the refrigerator, and what's going to happen with it in the refrigerator, it's going to solidify and firm up because it's warm and now it's gonna get cold. I've got a little sample of that right here for you, because uh, of course we have to do that kind of thing. So I made some ahead. This is the, the chocolate uh, ganache for the truffle. And what I do is take a little scoop, and a circle scoop, like an ice cream scoop, and set up the truffle. Okay, just so you can kind of get in there and see the, the truffle going on there. Okay, and I got one more here for us. And again, once that sets in the refrigerator, you actually have to take it out and let it set for a little bit so that it softens. Once it's softened, then you can scoop it. Once you scoop it, guess what? You gotta put it back into the refrigerator. So right now, I'm going to be putting these back into the refrigerator and we're gonna move on and then come back to these so we can show you because what I'm going to do with these truffles is roll them and coat them with chocolate and, or some with chocolate, some with cocoa and do a little decor with them. Okay, so that's our, our chocolate truffles uh, for that. Okay, so far so good. The next thing that I want to do is, again, with, uh, with this, now I'm going to take some chocolate that I have here, okay, and this one's in a water bath. I'm just going to step over here so I can put up the, the heat on this one, and I'm going to get, bring my ingredients together. I'm going to... Okay, so chopped chocolate that's in there. 
Now this time what I'm going to do is melt it. I'm going to melt the chocolate on water, on a, what we call a water bath. So there's water in the pan. It's going to get hot. And the chocolate is chopped here. And I'm going to put that there. With that chocolate, what I'm going to do is also, again, this is going to be a chocolate fondant, which is like a little chocolate cake, uh, which uh, is a very simple recipe, and I figured this would be a, a good thing for you. So I'm going to add in some butter into the chocolate as this is melting. So we're going to melt the chocolate and the butter together this time, separate, you know, with the, the water bath. Okay, so as that starts to melt, what we're going to do is crack a couple eggs here. So I've got a couple eggs going to go in. It's actually about six eggs for this uh, recipe. Okay, it's about a half a cup of butter and a half a cup of chocolate and six eggs. This chocolate fondant is really wonderful, rich, really easy to, to do as well. So I figured I'd do a nice easy recipe for you in this sort of fashion. So with this, uh, using a whisk, crack up, crack the eggs open and whisk that together. Okay, so we're doing good here. Into that, I'm going to add in the flour. So we've got a little bit of flour. You can see this going on. So we're going to make this batter. It's basically a, you know, a nice little batter that's happening. Okay, and mixing the, the flour and egg together. And that's going to come together. To that also, now I'm going to add in our sugar. Okay, about a cup of sugar into that as well. So this mixes, I mean, you can use a regular mixer, but I figured we'd do this all by hand today. So you kind of get a, a good example of what happens here for a batter. And just to take a look at our, our chocolate on melting over here with the butter, it's going nicely. it take another moment to get melted through together. Okay, the batter just coming together here. For this chocolate fondant, it's almost like a chocolate souffle without being a souffle though. So, with that kind of a, if, with a souffle, I would have whipped the egg whites uh, and separated and whipped the egg whites, which would have been a, a little bit uh, different. So here I'm going to take the, the whisk and whisk our melting chocolate and butter together. As you can see that going on. And again, beautiful. Take that off the fire. Let this finish melting so it doesn't. Okay. So to this, I'm going to add in the chocolate into the fondant. Get all that beautiful chocolate into the, the fondant here. and get that mixed in. The beauty of this uh, fondant recipe is that you can set this up, set it into the refrigerator for like a dinner party, which I love to do. And then just uh, just kind of at the end, because it's gonna be served room temperature or warm or hot, uh, so that you can sort of bake it when you're, you're ready to cook and you can leave it into the refrigerator so you're ready for it. Okay, so with that, I've actually buttered some molds with a little bit of sugar in it. Okay, so with that, and going to take the, the mold and fill the chocolate fondant in. 
So one, then I got a second one here. Okay. Very good. And guess what? That's going to go into the oven as well. So this is a, we've got the oven ready, 400 degrees for the profit. And we'll come back to that at the end of this. And you'll see how that has come together. Okay. So we're doing good so far. We've got two recipes going on with the, the chocolate. Now, I've got one more really simple one for you right here. And this one, I'm actually going to take our chopped chocolate. Okay, got chopped chocolate. And now I'm going to put that into our microwave. Okay, microwave also is a good way to melt chocolate. Okay, you have to be careful with it but you can melt the chocolate. You melt it little by little in the microwave. So set it for a minute. We're gonna go and mix it slightly and then melt it again for another minute. Okay, and this is going to be a chocolate bark. Okay, chocolate bark is something that uh, really works out nicely. It's a lot of fun and it's easy to make because there's almost nothing to do with this but decorate. Melt the chocolate and decorate. So this guy, you can see, is uh, going to be really easy to, to do. The hardest thing is melting it. So as this uh, melts, I'm going to just take it out so we can take a look at it. Okay, so it's almost nothing yet, but I'm just going to give it a mix and let it continue to, to melt there. Okay, so with our with our bark. What I've got is a mold, which I've just got a plastic wrap on, and I've got some garnish ingredients. Okay, so with this uh, chocolate bark, I'm actually going to season it with a little bit of curry, and then I've got some cashews, um, almonds, candied ginger, and also some pumpkin seeds. Okay, so we've got uh, three different types of things that are good, four different types of things that go on top and a little curry to go inside the chocolate to give it a little bit of depth, a little bit different flavor, which I think uh, will really uh, be some fun stuff. So I'm going to take a look at this chocolate. Okay, it's starting to get ready there. It's starting to melt down. I'm just going to mix it so it doesn't have any hot spots or burns. And continue to continue to, to melt that. So as I'm waiting for that, I I know that uh, you guys might have some questions. So does anyone have any questions at this moment that I can answer for you? No? Okay. In that case, we'll continue on. No, I do. Yeah. You do? Okay. Uh, go ahead. Uh, when you were making the fondue, how much flour did you use? Okay, fondant. Fondant, not fondue, but fondant. Uh, fondant. Yeah, so the fondant, the, yeah. the flour yeah. was a half a cup of flour, a half cup a of cup. sugar, six eggs, yeah. and a half a cup a butter and a half a cup of chocolate. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. I wish I could have some right now. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. okay, so here I'm back to our melting chocolate in the microwave. And as you can see that chopped chocolate, it was the same chopped chocolate that I did this but now again, the body, the heat of the chocolate does melt together. So you have to be careful when you're melting chocolate, not to keep it in the microwave or keep it on the, the stove top till it's completely melted. But you want to take it off before because you don't want to, uh, you don't want to hurt the chocolate. You don't want to burn the chocolate 
uh, and, or overheat it, overheat it. So that chocolate is delicate. Uh, so here's kind of, that's the fun part of it. Okay, look at that. I've been amazing myself by not licking my fingers during this demonstration, but. <laughs> okay, so here we go. So this goes in. That's the pure chocolate. And we're going to spread that out. Okay, and as I suggested, I'm going to season it with a little bit of curry powder. We could have put the curry powder into the chocolate if we wanted, but I wanted the color on this uh, as, as well as the flavor. We've got some cashew nuts that are going to go in here. Okay, and guess what? Some pumpkin seeds. Love the pumpkin seeds. That's what makes chocolate healthy. You know, chocolate really is healthy. Dark chocolate, uh, anything over 70% chocolate, which I've got here, uh, is really healthy and you should eat chocolate. It's not like eating candy. The whole difference is completely different. And here I've got some uh, candy ginger to go on top of this. Okay, so really a, a pretty, pretty dish. Uh, and guess what? You can put anything you want on that. My wife wanted to do marshmallows on it. Uh, if you're doing a, a chocolate bark, you can do it with peanuts or kind of anything else that you want. I was just going to show it to you here. And this is going to go into the refrigerator. And with that, as you can see, here's a chocolate bark there to gather the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. And with the chocolate bark, what we can do is take it and crack it, okay, and kind of cut it into nice chunks so that it becomes kind of fun and just a nice presentation of just rich, beautiful chocolate to kind of enjoy. So. I'm, who am I going to pass that to? Who's going to have some of the chocolate uh, bark there? Alan, I'm, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're a little bit distanced, but you get the idea. So yes. the chocolate bark, just beautiful rich chocolate, nothing in it, a little seasoning if you like it, and then some nuts, some raisins, cran cranberries, whatever you like on top, and it kind of really makes a, a delicious snack. Great for entertaining. If you want to cut into little squares, we can do that as well. Okay, so now we've got one more to finish here. Okay, so what we want to finish with is I'm going to just melt a little bit of chocolate and get in the microwave for just a moment because what we're going to do is the, the chocolate truffles. Okay, so the chocolate truffles. Okay, these are the ones that I, I scooped before. And what I've done here is roll them. And with that, I've got some chocolate. So the chocolate I've melted. Again, this is just straight chocolate, melted. And for this melted chocolate, we don't want to get it too hot because otherwise it'll melt the truffle. Okay, so we got some beautiful chocolate going on there. As you can see, when you do that, it actually smells great. Okay, and with that, so what I'm going to do is take a chocolate truffle, plop it into the chocolate, tap it, Tap it, tap it, tap it, so that we get the extra chocolate off of it. Wipe it through and finish it there. So I'm going to do the same thing. Another chocolate truffle like that. Tap the extra off, so what you're seeing is it's 
going and dripping, dripping, finishing the extra drip off and just sliding off. And do another chocolate truffle like that. Okay, beautiful coat. This is going to give uh, the chocolate truffle a really nice outside coating to it, which is really beautiful. Nice sheen to it. Okay, and then finish it like that. So with this, what we can also do is, I like to sometimes uh, on this do a little Caribbean sea salt. So you can just garnish with a little sea salt here. Okay, and then what we do is also I'm gonna give you another example of taking the truffle and putting it into cocoa. So we just put it into some cocoa. Again, the same sort of thing, taking it and putting it the cocoa. And you can see just the, the cocoa finishing here, which gives it a kind of bitterness for a finish. Okay, a bitter cocoa outside, which is really nice with chocolate because it gives us a little bit of differential for the palate. It makes it interesting as you're eating it. Okay, and so that's kind of what we're going to get there. Then, of course, we have to have some truffles here. So we take them and put them into little truffle holders. Okay, so I've got the truffles going on here, and I'm going to put them into little truffle cups, just like so. And kind of set these up. I also one of the things you could do is kind of color them if you like. And so I've got a little bit of gold spray. Uh, it's food grade gold. And just kind of tap, 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 tap. There you go. Just a little gold for those glitzy sort of folks that like that kind of glitz on chocolate. We can do that. Okay, and as we say, here you go. Here's our chocolate truffles for you. Hope you enjoy it. And one day you're gonna come and get the taste of it when you come to St. Lucia, when you come to Jade Mountain and you be my guest. You know what? Every December we do a chocolate festival out there. And what we do is a bean to bar tour. We have a seven course all chocolate dinner. We do chocolate workshops. We just have a a lot of fun with this uh, out in St. Lucia Jade. So kind of this is what our, our, the story of chocolate is. I hope you've all enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please ask now or else uh, I'm sure I can share an email. Uh, and if you want to get in touch with me, it's alan.susser at gmail.com uh, or go to my site, chefallens.com uh, or the new cookbook, which is green fig and lionfish, uh, and you, you get that. Chocolate is wonderful. I hope you enjoyed today. Really glad to be part of this community and so glad to, to have you be here and enjoying it and supporting the community. So thank you. Alan, thank you on behalf of all of us. Your sweetness came through with the chocolate and we love having you in the community. Uh, I only wish I could run around the corner and grab all these and pass them out to everybody. Uh, thank you so much. Julie, Hannah. Thank you, Chef Allen, so much. That's oh, the oh, chocolate fondant coming out of the oven. Hold on. Chocolate fondant. I'm telling you, you guys should come over. <laughs> <laughs> we would love Already. it. Chef Allen. Hannah had um, had asked a question earlier. If maybe you could just tell us briefly um, about how we could support restaurants and if you have any thoughts on um, what's happening right now with restaurants in this COVID situation. It's terrible for restaurants. I'll tell you what, really very difficult. Uh, restaurants are now finally opening uh, to half capacity. Um, there's a, a lot of a lot of important things that 
restaurateurs need to do to keep everybody safe, to keep the employees safe, to keep you guys safe. Uh, so, so I think the, the best thing to do is to support the restaurants, is to order from the restaurants. Either if you feel comfortable to go and sit outside at a restaurant, um, do that. If it's going to a restaurant and taking out and allowing them to be able to uh, you know, serve you, I think that, that that's great. Uh, there's just so much that they need. I mean, restaurant business is a tough business without COVID, without with having a full restaurant with all the, the things, but keeping it safe for the employees, making sure that you know, we're wearing gloves, wearing masks, staying socially distanced. These are all the same facts that we're asking you to do and should be doing in the restaurant twice as much because we don't want anything to happen to you. We want to make sure that you have a wonderful experience when you come to a restaurant or when you take out from a restaurant. So supporting the restaurants is important. Uh, supporting Feeding South Florida is something that I do on a regular basis as well. Feeding South Florida is our local food bank and they are helping with uh, food distributions throughout our community. They do it here on Tuesdays, uh, you know, every other week. Uh, we, we all need to work together. We all need to help each other during this time of COVID. But quite honestly, hopefully as we go forward, okay, not just, you know, well, COVID's over. When it's over in another six months or a year or two from now, Hopefully we're still a great community that supports each other and listens to each other and wants to help each other grow and develop because that's what it's all about. We want to, you know, that's what the hospitality is about. That's why I love restaurants because I want to be able to see you smile with the things that I do. And there's lots of people who work in restaurants who want that too. So that's kind of how I see helping a restaurant to its out. Well, thank you. Alan, thanks for your um, for all that you do for feeding South Florida. I think that that's really remarkable. And it's um, if you want to um, include for us any information that we can share with our members about how they can support feeding South Florida, we would love to do that. Sure, I will absolutely do that. Okay, great. And and remind us again where we can buy your book. Where can we find yeah. your book other than the library? Okay, well online. Uh at my website, which is greenfigandlionfish.com. You can get it at Books and Books uh, online or at the, at the stores, or also at amazon.com. Yes. I mean, it's, uh, it's, Amazon is featuring it, so it's, it, it's there. Absolutely. Yes. You know, <laughs> or if you get it from the, my website, I can autograph it and send it to you as well, or drop it at your house. Wonderful. That is so nice. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Do, if you want me to, I'll come over and help you clean up. <laughs> ah, <all right. laughs> Left, uh, leftovers never look so good. That I apologize. It would be a pleasure. <laughs> it was a wonderful evening with you, and we thank you so much, Chef Allen. Thank you. A pleasure to be a part of uh, the community with you and support the library and friends of the library. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the invite. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A okay, pleasure. tonight Good night. that is Good gonna night, conclude our that's gonna conclude our presentation. Thank you to all of the board and members and friends who have joined us this evening. We really appreciate seeing you all on here and we miss you all so much. Hope Stay to see safe. you soon. Stay safe. Stay bye -bye. safe. That's right. Be healthy. Bye -bye. Good night to everybody. Going to end the meeting.